And now to talk about our module of the week, let's turn it over to Martin Anderson Klutz, a senior solutions engineer at Acquia and a maintainer of a number of Drupal modules and recipes of his own. Martin, what do you have for us this week? Thanks, Nick. Do you want to extend the capabilities of the Workspaces system in Drupal Core? There's a module for that. It's called Workspaces Extra, and it was created in April of 2021 by Andre Matescu, um, A. Matescu on Drupal.org of Tag1, who has also contributed to Workspaces in Core, among many other things. Now, it does have a 2.0.0-alpha3 uh, release, which works with Drupal 10.3 or 11. It is actively maintained. In fact, that latest release is less than a week old. Uh, for security, technically it's opted into security coverage, but it won't uh, actually have coverage until there is a stable release. There is test coverage and it has 20 open issues, three of which are bugs against the current branch, though one of those has already been fixed. According to Drupal.org, it's uh, currently in use by 89 sites. And one of the big features that was in the Drupal 10.3 release was that Workspaces is now officially stable. That said, not everything works the way some site builders will want it to. And that's where a contrib solution like Workspace Extra can help to fill in the gaps. It provides new options like letting you roll back changes from a published workspace, move content between workspaces, discard changes in a workspace, squashing content revisions when a workspace is published, and more. Workspaces Extra, or WSE, also includes a number of submodules to add even more capabilities. For example, they can allow your workspace to stage an allow list of configuration changes, deploy workspace content using an import-export system, stage menu changes, and more. For workflow, there's an option to generate a shareable workspace preview link for external users and a scheduler to publish your workspace workspace at a specific day and time. I will add that the first time I played with workspaces, I ran into an issue where I couldn't create media entities within a workspace. I don't know for sure that this has been fixed in core, but the core issue about it is still listed as needs work. That said, the last comment on that issue, and we'll have a link in the show notes, list WSE is something that helps. So if you encounter the same issue with workspaces, WSE is worth a try. So let's talk about workspaces extra. Um, the value of this show just got exponentially better with the, with the addition of this module. I feel like this does a lot of things just looking at the list here that I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Hey, look at that. That's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think this is probably a great add on for, uh, for workspaces. I can also mention that I first heard about this module myself uh, during the recording of an episode a few months back when we had Ron Northcutt as a, I think he was a guest host at the time, might have been an off the cuff episode. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to, I'll have to keep this in mind. Um, I had to say, we'll probably talk about this more, but Workspaces feels like a game changer for people that maintain seasonal content, right? And I, yeah, I don't have a lot of clients that need that, but the clients that do need that, the amount of workarounds that we create to try to make it so that they can publish like five, even just like five or six pages during like, or not even seasonal, like if they're putting out a coupon or, you know, having a fall sale or something like, I think this is going to, um, you know, I think this is going to enhance something that a lot of clients are going to yeah. really like about Drupal. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree, and I will say, and we're gonna we're gonna once we get into the the show, we'll talk more about this. But I think like the first time I used Workspaces, it was a little hinky, uh, and it was before it was like included in core fully. So, um, but like I do agree, Nick. I think like the content shell game shifting, whatever you want to call it, uh, for different Drupal environments is is going to be. Um, super interesting and that's something that um, workspaces extra seems to have some pretty interesting tools to help with that um specifically like uh, moving content between workspaces and um you know the client i'm thinking of is using layout builder so like the layout builder tweaks for workspaces are, i think are going to be um pretty interesting so yeah interested to kind of add this in and see see how it how it works and um martin have you used this module like in in detail or like once or twice or not at all like what's your what's your feel there 
if I recall correctly, I've installed it and played around with it, but I think that was just after 10.3 was released. And so I think a lot of the extra goodness and changes that have been put into the module to, to really make it, you know, better suited as a, um, an enhancement for 10.3 and newer specifically, because some of the things that the module had before then uh, actually got sort of released as part of that 10.3 release when workspaces became stable. And so um, I think if you look back at it, like the 1.0 release was really uh, pre 10.3 for a lot of things that eventually were released as part of 10.3. And now the 2.0 branch is really for things that that build on top of um, 10.3 and newer. So I haven't really had a chance to use the 2.0 branch, but definitely something I'm excited to try out. I'm actually sorry. I'm, I'm as you're as you're speaking. I'm also looking at the sub modules provided and like the last two workspaces preview and workspaces scheduler. I'm like, holy moly, that feels like those feel like great great additional uh, use cases there. So yeah, the the scheduler module I think is really going to be a game changer for content managers. Yeah, because you know, like Nick said, if you have like a promotion or a coupon that's going live. Do you do you want to have someone awake at 2 a.m. Eastern time to like launch that? Um, and with a scheduler, once you've used it a few times, you have confidence that uh, when cron runs after that appointed time, it's going to publish everything and you have that confidence. You can sleep easy and know that uh, your site, uh, the content's going to get updated. Or or at least wake up like five or 10 minutes after the content's supposed to be published, look at it and go, OK, I'm going back to sleep now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Looks up good. On your phone, right? And yeah, you don't yeah, right. You don't even have to leave. You don't have to. That, I mean, that's what everybody's moving towards is like not having to leave their bed to do things on the internet. I just have one thing to pick on about this module, and it occasionally happens with uh, contrib modules that are a part of an ecosystem. But why WSE? Why not workspaces underscore extra? Like, I think every module that extends other modules should be underscore, you know, after the module name. We have this with the group module where group media is all crammed together and not too separate. Um, but I would love to see some standard conventions for those. Yeah, it's seven extra so characters that you'd have to type every time you're typing a hook or something like that. So that may be why they shortened it. The one that I go ahead, Martin. I was just going to say the one I came across recently that that I found really puzzling was within the group module. One of the sub modules is group node, but it's G node is the machine name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was exactly. like, yeah. <laughs> well, I I think historically the reason for that I bet if we talk to Christian is that uh, I bet you that was the original module or something, the original genesis of group, and uh, that's probably where it came from. If I had to guess. My guess would be it started off as a separate project and then you just decided to bring it in as a sub-module. But yeah, there's yeah a variety of ways that could have come to pass. Do you know how much easier it would have been, though, if I were searching for Gnode instead of group? Because the, the namespaced group is so horrible to search against. <laughs> uh, Drupal group and sometimes you get organic groups results and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I love the module. I use it for lots of projects, but... Um, I, I found out that Velcro, you mentioned Velcro last week's episode, that namespace is available. So one of us needs to build a module named Velcro. Wow. Just now, that. now, now, you know, uh, all of our listeners um, are now going to go get that namespace. So by the time this well, comes out, it'll be gone. Patreon, uh, our Patreon supporters get first dibs. So <laughs> interesting. I, um, I also, I also just want to point out too, I think you just said, uh, was it you, Scott, or Josh that said that it's extra characters you have to type out when creating a hook? Mm -hmm. That's no longer the case with object-oriented object hooks with the hook attribute. You just need to type out the actual hook that you're implementing. So that should no longer be a consideration. Sure. Uh, so what I was what I was going to say is that you know um, uh, naming things is hard, but I think like when you're, when you're in that development mindset, like what Scott said, probably holds true. They're like, Oh, shorter is better. So let's, uh, let's make it an acronym. Um, but you know, uh, sometimes we don't think about the end users and the fact that somebody that doesn't understand why something has an acronym or why it's shorter, shorter is better might be like, Oh, I need to look at, uh, you know, for modules in the workspace eco ecosystem. Um, and they may or may not find this. I'm assuming they probably will because they'll probably type workspaces into Google. But yeah, naming conventions. 
All right. So thank you, Martin, so much. Uh, if our listeners want to get in touch or have a module leak to suggest to themselves, what's the best way for them to do that? It's always great to get nominations for a module of the week in the Talking Drupal channel of Drupal Slack, or folks can reach out to me directly as Man Clue on all of the Drupal and social platforms.